This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. I'll introduce our speaker, Richard Cacchione Amendola. Uh, Richard was born in New York City and after a career on Wall Street as a financial analyst and president of Fitch Investor Services, which is now uh, Fitch Ratings, Richard has lived in Lima, Peru with his Peruvian spouse for over 20 years and has double nationality. He began collecting coins and notes at seven years of age. And since moving to Peru, he has specialized in Peruvian bank notes where he is preparing catalogs on Peruvian proofs and specimens on, and on Bolivian bank notes. This latter interest led him by accident to his current project of preparing a catalog of Argentine bank notes in, Boliv in Bolivian currency, a topic which has expanded to include six Latin American countries. He has given numismatic presentations in seven Latin American countries. Uh, Richard is co-founder and vice president of the Instituto de Investigación Numismática in Lima. Uh, he is also responsible for initiating an arrangement between the ANS and the IIN to expand uh, ANS's coverage of Latin America's uh, numismatic richness. He is a member of 21 cultural institutions in four countries, five of which are numismatic. A graduate of Manhattan College in economics, Richard has an MBA in finance from New York University and an MA in Latin American literature from Columbia University and is preparing his doctoral dissertation, doctoral dissertation at the Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos in Lima, which was founded in 1551, also in literature. He is also a literary biographer and critic and poet. And with that, I'll hand it over to Richard. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank um, Austin Andrews and Emma Prattiff for all of their help in, um, in organizing this, uh, uh, this presentation. Um, we are going to cover only 18 years of, uh, of history in Argentina and related countries, but uh, what we have found is we've got Argentine money in Bolivian currency. We are going to talk about uh, Peruvian and Chilean banknotes also uh, stamped convertible into uh, Bolivian currency. And then a, uh, a new chapter I will be adding um, will be Uruguay uh, issuing banknotes in uh, Brazilian currency. Um, you may recall that Brazil uh, tried to take uh, over Uruguay and make it one of its uh, uh, states, uh, but the uh, Uruguayans uh, fought that and won, and actually Garibaldi from Italy uh, participated in that particular war. And, um, but again, to give you a couple of um, uh, historical pieces of information, in 1810, it was what they call the May Revolution in Argentina, which ousted the Viceroy and the Viceroyalty became the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata. In 1816, on July 9th, they declared a secessionist war, uh, which culminated in independence, which was finalized on April the 5th in 1818. Uh, then started a series of civil wars between the Unitarians and the Federalists, uh, like our debates between the states' rights and Federalist supporters. Only we did it without a civil war until unfortunately 1860, but that was another issue. In 1826, uh, the first constitution uh, changed the uh, name to La Republica de Argentina. Uh, the series of civil wars that uh, uh, were in existence ended in 1852. In 1853, a new constitution, which is still in force today, uh, established a new name called the Confederación Argentina. So right away we're seeing we've got a country with a, uh, uh, an identity crisis, people using three different names uh, coincidentally for the same country. And it's kind of like if you change the name of a street, people are still gonna use the old name because they're used to it, they grew up with it. Um, this was part of the problem that they were having. Um, it was a lack of confidence, a lack of identity. 
1862, the Northern provinces received permission to allow their banks to issue banknotes in Bolivian currency, which will be, we will see moneda boliviana or pesos bolivianos or convertible into Bolivian money. We will learn why. In 1873, there was a worldwide economic uh, crisis. The United States was uh, heavily affected by that. And so were all of the uh, South American countries and uh, uh, Argentina was no exception. And many of the small banks uh, in Argentina did not survive that. In 1880, there was an apparent end of uh, 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 banking permissions. Some banks existed. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. In 1880, there was a reform uh, of banking, and uh, they trying to establish what they call a national bank, and to eliminate uh, all of these uh, independent banks, especially in the north, uh, to issue their own banknotes in uh, um, uh, other currency, would have to be in uh, in uh, uh, Argentine currency. Um, the latest notes that we have on this uh, have a date of the 1st of uh, January of 1881. We believe that uh, there are not many of them, and we believe that these were printed before the law of 1880 went into effect, and uh, they were permitted to uh, issue these uh, banknotes because they did circulate. Uh, a major currency reform did come into uh, force in 1881. Uh, well, it was passed in 1881, came into force in July of 1883, which introduced the bimetallic standard and uh, and the rest of the Argentine history were familiar with the defaults and other problems, but uh, those more modern issues do not concern us. Um, we see a map here in front of us, uh, the northern part of Argentina with uh, Bolivia in yellow, so, uh, Peru. Um, Paraguay and Uruguay, which used to belong to Argentina and they separated. Uh, and we will now go forward. And uh, here is a, a map of uh, all of South America and we can focus on the map that we have just seen. These are the countries that we're gonna be talking about in today's presentation. Uh, we've, we have it a little bit closer now. You will see on the left side, uh, Bolivia goes to the, uh, the yellow goes to the Pacific coast and Peru has green just above that. All of that territory on that coast where I'm, uh, which I am marking right now was lost and taken over by Chile uh, during the uh, war of the uh, Pacific or the uh, Salit, uh, uh, Saltpeter war of 1879, which ended in 1883. Let's talk about Argentina, uh, which it starts here. We have uh, panels uh, which show the distribution of the uh, banks by uh, geographic region. Those uh, bank names on the left, which are in upper and lower case, represent branches. If it's all in uppercase, they represent uh, the uh, headquarters uh, of the particular branch. Uh, Argentina has a total of 23 provinces. Of the 23 provinces, eight uh, uh, banks in eight of the provinces issued uh, banknotes in Argentine currency. The other provinces, uh, which have had scarce, uh, lesser populations, uh, did not. Uh, uh, here, in, as these four provinces that uh, we see right now, the uh, the strongest and uh, economically and uh, is Mendoza. It's also where the best wines from Argentina come from in that particular province. In the North Central area, we basically have two provinces. Um, uh, we have uh, Cordoba, which is the capital city of Cordoba province. And we have Rio Cuarto, which is about 120 miles uh, south and then St. Louis province. What you will find in, um, South America, it is very common in many of the countries where the capital city of a province will have the same name as the province. We have that in Peru as well. And uh, sometimes it's confusing. Um, we go into the Northeastern Argentina, 
we basically have one province that is major, uh, which has two major cities, uh, Santa Fe and Rosario. Santa Fe is the capital of the province, but Rosario is the most important city from a um, commercial point of view. Uh, now we're going to go to the um, to the far east. Uh, 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 it's only one province called Entre Rios. But what is interesting is of the 28 banks that we are going to see, um, seven of the cities uh, that we're going to see of the 16 cities are located in this one province. And once we show you a map, uh, you'll understand why. It is very crucial. And this is just north of, uh, it starts just north of uh, Buenos Aires, this particular area. These are the, uh, when we just saw three of the cities, these are three of the other cities. Some of the names like Waliwai, Waliwakaichi, these are names from the um, Guarani language of the uh, original inhabitants of this particular area. These statistics were prepared You'll see on the left, it says uh, 2018 total. This is when I started uh, this particular project. Um, we've been able to identify 28 commercial banks, commercial houses, and other financial and government issuers um, of notes in Bolivian currency. Uh, at the time, I used the uh, standard catalog of World Paper Money Specialized Issues, or CROWS, as some people call it. They had 204 identified uh, issues. Um, I knew at the time of seven other uh, bank notes, which uh, were not included in Krauss, uh, which brought it to seven, 211. Uh, then there were some known uh, variations, which uh, have stamps, uh, of branches of dates, uh, the bank inspector, uh, canceled notes, etc. That brought it to another 89. Then we have proof and specimens to 327. That's what I had identified as of 2000. Uh, 18. However, due to uh, additional research, uh, the estimate today is with all these variations, which could be uh, proof specimens, uh, circulated notes, remained or signed and unsigned, uh, canceled, non canceled notes, um, there could be approximately 500 notes and there may even be more. So, as you can see, we're dealing with a uh, very uh, uh, a very serious uh, uh, nucle uh, 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 quantity of banknotes that uh, were uh, very important for this uh, part of the country. Um, here I've given you on the bottom the locations of the uh, of the banks by uh, by provinces and the major cities in which they were, which is a compilation of what we have just seen. So there are 28 banking and commercial institutions and one government agency um, that were in eight provinces and in 16 cities. Here's the map again, but if you take a look on the lower part, you see the yellow here, Uruguay, and Buenos Aires is right here. And we begin the famous Rio de la Plata, which we all know about. Uh, la Plata, Plata in Spanish means silver, and uh, it also is the word used for money because in the colonial times, uh, uh, the money was basically in silver and there were gold coins, but those are more for the uh, wealthier people. But you see here where the arrow is going, there is a river uh, at the end of the Rio de la Plata, it divides into two rivers coming from the north. This is the Rio Uruguay which goes all the way up into uh, Brazil. And then we have the Rio Paraná, which goes all the way up into the north. And this is Entre Rios, which is not as big as this map now shows, because uh, this was uh, this map is about from uh, the 1850s. Um, this smaller province became the uh, focal point of a great part of the uh, commerce uh, for Argentina. Now, I mentioned that you might ask, well, we still haven't answered why this was money in, uh, uh, these bills were converted into Bolivian money. Here's Bolivia here. There was an awful lot of commerce in this part of, uh, uh, of the world with Bolivia, as well as in Peru, we have it, and in Northern Chile, we have it. But the big problem 
in Argentina, because of all these civil wars that I mentioned, the uh, weak governments, corruption, and uh, you know, and other uh, incidents, the people did not have confidence in their own money. I had um, uh, I, I've spoken to a lot of historians and a lot of intellectuals in uh, Argentina and in, uh, uh, in Bolivia as to why this existed. I got a lot of erudite responses. Uh, I wasn't uh, satisfied with any of them. It boils down to one word, confidence. But why confidence in Bolivia, a country that also had its political uh, problems uh, and its economic problems? You've all heard of Potosi. In Potosi is what they call the Cerro Rico, the, uh, which is the, uh, the rich hill. This was the most important silver deposit ever found in the world. Uh, it's still producing silver today, although not at the rate it used to. And also in Potosi, you had the largest mint in all of the Americas, which um, is a museum today, uh, but at the time was still producing uh, coins, silver coins. And these two factors are what gave the confidence to the Argentine people uh, to be able to accept the bank notes that we are going to talk about today. We'll start with the, uh, the map on um, where these cities are located. The most farther in the north is Tucumán, way up here. Uh, there's not much in this area. Tucumán is, by the way, is, uh, the smallest province in, uh, in uh, Argentina, uh, but the city itself is important for the region. Then you go down to Catamarca, uh, and then we go all the way down to Córdoba, which is a major city. This is the second largest city in uh, Argentina today. And then we go over to um, the cities of Santa Fe, and then La Paz and Paraná are in Entre Rios. Here on this map, which we had to divide, again, you see Cordoba, you see Santa Fe and Paraná, but at least we're able to see the rest of the cities with Mendoza, uh, which is the most important city in the West and is very close to the, uh, um, uh, to the uh, uh, Chilean border. And then we go to the right, we see uh, St. Louis, and uh, which is here, the Chilean border is here. You see that black line, uh, St. Louis, Rio Cuarto, which is a major agricultural area, especially for beef, is about 120 miles south, directly south of uh, Cordoba. Rosario is the third largest city in, uh, in the country and the third most important. Uh, Buenos Aires is here. Uh, it is not involved in these banknotes. The, uh, the law was only for the provinces in the north. And then we begin to see all the other uh, towns uh, that were in Rio, uh, uh, Entre Rios, and Entre Rios means between the rivers. And you can see we have the Paraná River here and the Uruguay River over here. This is one of the first bank notes uh, from the Banco Argentino. Uh, it's one real. They still use the combination of the real coming from the Spanish colonial period uh, to uh, you then see their pagará a la vista un peso. They will pay on site one peso, which is the new uh, currency, but not only in Argentina, but also the next word is plata boliviana. They abbreviated boliviana. And for this bill, you had to have eight, eight of these bills in order to get one peso. Uh, this bill was printed in uh, Argentina. Uh, we are going to see uh, a lot of uh, bills printed uh, in uh, American by American banknote company. Uh, you see Cordoba underneath. Um, Rosario was the headquarter for this bank, and they had five other branches, Cordoba of which was one. Every project of this nature has its what I call an elephant, uh, which means that there's one institution that just dominates the rest. And in this case, it is Banco Argentino. Uh, and I'll give you uh, an example of, of that when we get to later on. Here, I've given a presentation. It's the same banknote. Uh, you'll see uh, five versions of it. But, but this one here says Rosario, this one says Rosario, and they were in Rosario was engraved, whereas you see Concordia, Cordoba, 
and Parana, three of the branches, they were not engraved. These names were put on uh, with uh, a, um, uh, a typewriter in uh, Argentina. However, what this bank did was they established a color for each of its uh, branches so they didn't have to uh, stamp them. And uh, that represented the, um, I mean, the, the banknotes were uh, acceptable uh, currency uh, anywhere in the North, uh, but this helped the bank identify where the money was coming from. Now, why does this one, which is sort of grayish, say Rosario, and this one, which is more of a bluish, a light blue, say Rosario, the reason is uh, American Banknote Company took the specimen, which you can see from the three uh, holes on the bottom, took a specimen and from Rosario, and just changed the coloration and uh, used this as a specimen to send to the bank. And you can see the blue background. All of these have dark color. In this case would be uh, um, yellow, green, and orange uh, on the back. But we have seen a boat on those uh, uh, banknotes. But Peru used the same illustration. Uruguay used the same illustration. So the question is, what is the flag on these boats? And um, it, you know, the uh, uh, representatives of the American Banknote Company, when they went down to visit the various banks, they had books which had all the uh, uh, the uh, uh, vignettes that they were, were going to use and the bank selected the ones that they used. This particular bank note is not uh, the bank uh, or the boat it is not the ship is not from Argentina. It is not from Peru. It is not from Uruguay. This is the original uh, uh, vignette that I have in my collection. And as you can see, there are two vessels here both combination of uh, uh, sail and steam. Um, the one on the left is a actual, is a US Navy boat, USS Old Ironsides. It was in service for those four years. Um, it has the American flag. The one on the right has the British flag. And uh, if you were the president of the bank, you could uh, say, well, I just want this half. I don't want the other half. And uh, with the artists that American Banknote Company had that you were able to, uh, you know, alter the, uh, the designs and the artwork. Um, American Banknote Com uh, Company uh, really dominated the printing of banknotes in the Americas from Canada all the way down to uh, Chile and Argentina. And uh, you do have uh, Bradbury uh, Wilkinson from uh, London which also produced banknotes that eventually became part of American Banknote Company. Uh, there were some others. Uh, uh, we did see a, a banknote um, uh, printed in Argentina. We will see more. Uh, very, uh, very often the banks would uh, have bank banknotes printed in Argentina. In the meantime, they uh, are working with American Banknote uh, to design and develop uh, uh, notes that were going to circulate. and. Um, there was less chance of uh, fraud and falsification. And, uh, but that was uh, in order to be able to get bills in circulation, that was uh, part of the practice on uh, most of the banks. Um, I mentioned that a, a Banco Argentino has a, um, you know, was kind of the elephant. And I'm going to give you one uh, example. This is, uh, these are two examples of a note for cuatro reales and four reales. This one is a muestra, which is a specimen. This is a, uh, a note which obviously circulated. What uh, American, what uh, this particular bank did was from the 1st of October of 1866 to the 1st of December of 1868, they issued uh, banknotes uh, with the series. You can see here, uh, there was no series on the uh, specimen, but here with a typewriter they put in, they went from A to double F and the date here. Okay, the next double F would have been in uh, December of uh, 1868. Some, in some of the years, there were five different denominations issued. Some were only two, some were three. 
But if you add them all up between those two years from uh, 1866 to 1868, you're talking about 80 different banknotes. And that's uh, approximately 20% of uh, the total that we're talking about uh, that Palm uh, could very well exist in this, uh, in, in this uh, collection of notes for that period. And that's just from one issuer. Now, nobody has the volume that this bank does, but, um, uh, and to this, you have to add, you know, the specimens, the proofs, uh, any kind of other variants that uh, may exist. So, uh, as I said, this is the elephant uh, of the project. And this is uh, Series N, as you can see on the right side. This is from 1867. This is the one peso note. And it is, it's part of this series that I just mentioned to you. Um, we're going to see later on, they uh, issued another series of notes in 1873, but they did not have these letters or, they, or these particular dates. Everything was uh, engraved 1873. This again is a five, uh, um, a five peso note. Uh, the uh, hole on the bottom is very interesting. We don't know if this was uh, some kind of an accident, but if you look at the cutting uh, on a triangle uh, going up into the note, uh, is very clean. We believe this could have been some kind of a uh, uh, an instrument that they had used to uh, uh, cancel the note from circulation, but that is still being investigated. This is a bill, one of the bills, you can see the date up on the top is uh, 18, 1st of July, 1873. This was the uh, last uh, issue of uh, notes from this, uh, uh, from this particular bank. Um, by the way, of all of the uh, banks that we are talking about, the 28 different banks, only one of them is still in existence today. That is, it started as the Banco Provincial de Córdoba, changed the name to Banco de Córdoba, and it is known also as uh, Bancor, but it is uh, one of the largest banks in the country and still in existence. The others do not exist. This is a bank note from one of the eight commercial houses. It's uh, from uh, J. Benitez and Son. Now, uh, these commercial houses, in order to be able to issue the, uh, bank notes, had to get permit, had to register themselves as a, a bank to be able to do it. Some of them issue bank notes without the name bank, uh, uh, the word bank in it, which we will see in a good example of later on. Uh, some issued, um, uh, others like this, all of the bank notes had a, uh, uh, the word bank in them. What is interesting here is if you look up on the top, you see the dentation exactly as we have in stamps. Uh, there is another note that I have that also has the same feature. They're the only two that I have with this. Um, it's the particular, these particular bills were uh, printed. Uh, in such a form that you could just tear them apart. Otherwise, uh, you will see from uh, the way it's cut here on the, on the side, et cetera, uh, these were cut by scissors. And uh, very often the margins were not, uh, uh, were not uh, preserved because of the way they were cut. Um, the, um, many of these bank, uh, these notes were also produced in such a way that it's like in a checkbook, you have the, uh, the talon on the, uh, on the end where you have the number of the check and we would uh, write in there uh, to whom we wrote our check for and the amount. And they were uh, issued that way with the number on the left and the number on the right. You will see some uh, rather unusual cuttings on the left. The reason is to help protect against uh, 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 falsification. This is another bank the uh, Banco de Comercio, uh, as you can see, the uh, American bank note produced uh, very beautiful bills. Uh, here you'll see uh, a commercial scene with uh, 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 a businessman, people working with him. Um, here with the telescope, you see a maritime influence. This uh, particular bank is from Entre Rios, uh, as you can see, Gualeguay. 
and is between the two rivers because it was the river transport that really was the lifeblood of uh, the commerce. And they have a lot of allegorical figures. What we are going to see also is a lot of uh, figures of uh, animals, horses, uh, cows, uh, sheep, a uh, couple even have pigs on them. Why? Because agriculture was very, very important uh, in Argentina. Uh, it was very common uh, in South America at this time for banknotes to represent the progress and development of the countries in Peru and in other countries. Uh, the, first, the first railroad was built in South America, was built in Peru, it was inaugurated in 1851. And um, uh, we see a lot of banknotes that have uh, motifs uh, with uh, railroads. Uh, the railroad came much later in, um, in Argentina. And, um, but uh, they're trying to show that uh, the banks are solid. Sometimes you have a dog uh, guarding a, uh, a, a strong box to show that you know your money is safe with us. Um, uh, another thing that you'll find in the names of the uh, uh, notes that were uh, printed by American banknote company, the name will either be in English or in Spanish. That depended on the uh, the desire of the issuer. And uh, the American banknote company in Spanish would be. Compañía Americana de Billetes de Banco, and then followed by Nueva York. But sometimes instead of American, Compañía Americana, you see Compañía Nacional, or Compañía Continental, or Compañía Colombiana, because American banknote was not one company. It was a, con a conglomeration of the companies in the United States that were the major producers of uh, engraving and, uh, and banknotes. And um, sometimes a uh, contract would be given to American National Bank note because their, uh, their fees were less, the quality of the paper was less, et cetera. And um, so uh, there is that that we have to deal with as well. This is the same bank. Again, it's another beautiful uh, uh, note. You uh, very often will see an allegorical figure again, um, with uh, commercial, uh, uh, showing uh, co commercial products. Uh, usually there's a ship off in the uh, distance somewhere. Again, you see uh, a man taking care of a sheep here. And very often you will see uh, young children or women. Uh, and these are not allegorical people. Uh, something that is very unusual. Sometimes the owner of the bank uh, will put uh, his wife or his children in the banknotes. Um, but um, that's what we have. This is a banknote which is very interesting. Uh, it's uh, four reales from uh, Bank of Oxandaburu y Garvino. There is an error in this uh, banknote. Up on the top here says Garvino with a V, a lower, you know, lowercase V. It should be B, uh, uppercase V. We put this on the uh, bottom to show, you know, what it should say. Here's what it says. Here's what it should say. There are three versions of notes issued by this issuer. It is a commercial house. It only lasts about three years. Um, but this is an example of what I meant where bank notes were issued without the name bank. And then in the... Uh, in the second issue, there's another one uh, without the, uh, the name bank. Again, you can see the uh, V there. And if you look at the vignette on the uh, left, you see a gaucho talking to a, uh, uh, a woman, you know, uh, living in the country and she is preparing uh, cornmeal or something for food. This is very much the life in the country, which is also depicted. We are going to see this uh, vignette uh, uh, again, you will also notice that the woman is barefoot, the gaucho is not. Uh, again, you've got a horse in the middle. Uh, we made reference to uh, the importance of horses. Um, by the way, the bank note I just showed you, I've got three of them. One that you just saw, another one that has the extension to the left, over here on the left, and it has the number, and the other one has the full talon uh, 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 extension. Here's one. The same bank, it has the full talent extension. They would usually be cut right about here. 
and the number would be the same for both and uh, for uh, issuing purposes and control. This is a very beautiful note with the coloration. This is of the, uh, this is an American banknote uh, issue for the same bank. You can see that the surname was uh, corrected here and now they are putting in that they have, uh, uh, they're using the uh, bank name. You get 1869. Uh, and as I said, this, uh, you have a dog, which is again is showing uh, fidelity and confidence. Then you go to um, a one peso Boliviana note. There is a grammatical error here. Remember, this was printed in the United States, was not printed in uh, Bolivia. It's peso ends in O, which is masculine. Boliviana ends in A, which is feminine. This should be an O at the end, not an A. And But again, you see cows, uh, you see a child probably related uh, to one of the, uh, could be related to one of the owners. And here is an allegorical figure of an Indian woman with her child out in the countryside. This note has a, uh, a slaughterhouse uh, for animals. You have here an agricultural, uh, allegorical woman with a, uh, a scythe and she has wheat. This represents the, uh, the richness of uh, agricultural production. Again, you've got a, a sailor over here. And again, you are uh, uniting here, depicting uh, the richness of agricultural production and the importance of the navigation of the two rivers. This banknote I call the guilty one because it's with this banknote that I started this project. Um, I bought it thinking that it was a Bolivian banknote. I tried to investigate the, uh, the bank in Bolivia, couldn't find anything. I called a friend of mine who's a, uh, a historian and uh, a numismatist in uh, Potosí. And I said, where is this bank? Uh, how come I couldn't find this bank in Bolivia? He says, well, it's not Bolivian, it's Argentine. And I couldn't believe that in another country they would permit uh, money printed in the country of another, uh, uh, in the money of another country and piqued my curiosity. And that's what started this project. This is the uh, 10 uh, uh, peso Boliviano note. Uh, again, you see the same uh, vignette that we saw earlier uh, to depict the importance of the people, you know, the country people. Again, we've got a gaucho to the left over here. He's sitting down, he's uh, probably finishing his lunch. And again, we got three horses. And um, uh, again, it's this representation of they're trying to show that the banks are tied to the people, they're tied to the country. We have another uh, banknote here from the same bank, only this is un peso fuerte. This is not in Bolivian money. This is in Argentine money. Now, what does peso fuerte mean? They could say un peso in moneda legal or moneda en curso, which means legal money or uh, money in, in circulation. That money is not supported by a specie. Uh, to defend it, where Fuerte is supported by silver. Uh, and uh, Fuerte means uh, strong. But the reason we're showing you this particular uh, banknote is for this uh, seal over here, which we can now see here. It says Banco Domingo Garbino. Uh, the two uh, partners separated and Domingo Garbino wound up owning the bank. And he issued a series of uh, six to eight different denominations uh, of banknotes uh, while he owned it. He did not go and uh, print new banknotes. He used banknotes that were already in existence. Uh, they were basically remainders that he stamped and those were put into uh, to circulation. And what the interesting thing is of the six that we have found, three of them, are in pesos fuertes, which is Argentine currency, and the other three are in Bolivian currency. So it's, it's kind of an anomaly. No other bank uh, has this particular uh, situation. 
We go to uh, Banco Paraná, also in uh, Entre Rios. It's uh, two uh, Bolivian reales. Um, here we see a, uh, uh, an animal that you find out in the country. And, uh, but again, you got the allegorical figure of justice here, but you have a ship here. And uh, these are all trying to show confidence uh, to the people. Same bank, these, the, the, the bank we just saw in this one were printed in Argentina. Here we've got a ram. And again, here we've got a uh, little boy uh, in the countryside with his sheep, et cetera. Again, for identification with the importance of uh, agriculture. The same bank, uh, we see, see a cow here. Now I have another uh, bill of, uh, exactly like this, not as in good shape as this one, but I bought it for one reason. These bills that were uh, printed in um, Argentina, almost all of them are what we call unifacial, which means they're only printed on one side. So on the back of the other bill that I have is an oval uh, 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 stamp which has 1869 in it. This bill is dated, you can see it right here, 1868. So the bills were issued for two years, 1868 and again in 1869. It was not necessary for them to print more bills. They, uh, they had them and they used what they, uh, uh, they just stamped them. Other stamps we're going to see later on, uh, only in Cordoba, the province of Cordoba, they, they have a bank inspector. Uh, none of the other provinces had that. This is uh, actually a savings uh, bank, which uh, is one of the uh, few oddball institutions that uh, 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 did issue uh, bank notes. However, what is interesting here, if you take a look, they all have the same design. Again, you've got the same gaucho seated that we saw before. You've got another gaucho uh, over here. Uh, but what, did, uh, what are we trying to show here? Up here at the top, remember I talked about variance. The, really the key word with this project is variance. And that's why the number gets so elevated that went from like 327 up to around 500. Um, the number here is handwritten in red ink. The number here is stamped. You can't see it too well, but this was bought more for the, uh, for the stamp on the back. It says Rosario, which is the, uh, uh, the headquarters of this particular savings bank. And it's Caja de uh, uh, de Oro. So they, they repeated the name and the information. But over here, it's not so clear in the uh, in the photo, but again on the top you have Caja de Oros, on the bottom is Rosario, but in the middle is Mo uh, Monasterio and Company, which is the name of one of their clients. Um, I have not seen any other bill like this. Uh, my friends in Argentina have not seen bills like this. And so we're trying to investigate. Again, we go back to variants. Uh, again, some of these bills were um, uh, signed. Uh, some were not signed. If you look at the signatures on the three bills, you've got three different uh, signatures here. But um, it's just uh, and this particular one here has no stamp on the uh, reverse. The um, But this is just part of the uh, call it fun we have in trying to identify all of these bills. This uh, bill is has actually no name of the issuer. Uh, so how do you know who issued this bill? Uh, it comes from a city called uh, Victoria. The original name of this city was called Matanza, which means the killing or the slaughter. Because in 1770, uh, 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 from Rosario, a Spanish uh, military expedition went into this area. There was a hill there and they slaughtered a great number of Indians. They gave it that name, um, but in uh, 1851, the name was changed to Victory, which is what Victoria means, which is a lot nicer than uh, the former name. Uh, this banknote does come from a, um, uh, a commercial house called Miguel Lanieri. Well, Miguel is a Spanish uh, name and Lanieri is an Italian surname. 
Miguel Lanieri was born in Italy. So his name was Michele Lanieri and his brother, um, uh, Jose Lanieri was also born in Italy. So he's Giuseppe Lanieri. In this particular case, the two businessmen changed their names. Uh, they hispanized their names uh, to be able to identify more with the, um, uh, how we say, the commercial community and in dealing with their, their clients. Uh, Argentina, by the way, has the uh, second highest uh, Italian immigration rate in the Americas. The United States is the first and Argentina was the second in uh, terms of uh, numbers. Um, the reason why people know this was uh, Lanieri, they received these bills from the stores uh, or the store of uh, this particular gentleman. And uh, however, he did have to change and uh, he did got his, uh, his permission to use, uh, to form a bank. And the uh, few bank notes that were issued later on uh, did have the name and he changed it to uh, the bank note. But again, you can see very clearly in uh, Peso Boliviano, but again, in both of them, we see ships because uh, again, the uh, fluvial uh, commerce was very important to them. This is the Banco de Mawa and company uh, in the, um, the note that uh, uh, Emma had sent out a few days ago, announcing uh, this conference, uh, she uh, selected a bill like this, uh, it is the uh, it is actually a, a color proof of 1867, which did not go into a production. Uh, this is a, a bill with slight uh, changes in the colors um, of 1868, which did go into uh, production and circulation. You can see that it's assigned. Uh, Maura is uh, was the um, Baron Maura from uh, Brazil, who was very close to the emperor. He came to Argentina in 1851, and he opened up a uh, an exchange house for money, and uh, that was uh, his business there for several years in Rosario, uh, until he opened up this bank about 18 uh, about 1862 63, uh, and the bank lasted to about 1877. Uh, he also did exactly the same thing in Uruguay using the same name, uh, Banco Mawa. And uh, uh, he was very important in uh, the commerce uh, for both of those two countries uh, in the period of time he was there. Um, this is an interesting uh, note. You can see it's very, uh, it's also uh, uh, printed in Argentina. You see the very uh, curved, uh, uh, cutting over here. Uh, again, this is for security purposes. Uh, in the uh, talon that I mentioned to you, these would come in. Because these uh, cuttings are so perfect, it had to be done by a machine. Um, there is a catalog by an American named uh, Robert Bauman, who had probably one of the largest collections of uh, Argentine banknotes. Uh, and in his, uh, for this particular bank, in his catalog, this particular a vignette or, uh, or uh, caricature uh, was listed as General Manuel uh, uh, Bergamo, uh, Belgrano, I'm sorry. Uh, however, anybody who is an Argentine and who is blind can see that this is not Belgrano, this is General Jose de San Martin, uh, who was um, actually the uh, person most responsible for the independence of uh, Chile and uh, Peru. Now, we can see over here a series of perforations which come from the center over here. If the banknote were to be turned upside down, etc., you don't have the whole world word, but it means uh, inutilizado. Inutilizado means unusable. This is when the banknote was canceled and can no longer be uh, used in circulation. I do have other banknotes of this uh, bank. Uh, they do not have the perforations inutilizado. They have a, uh, an ink stamp right across. I actually have two of them with the ink stamp here right across the same word. But what's interesting is both of the, uh, the words inutilizado are upside down. Uh, that could just be a coincidence, but uh, so there were the two ways in which they um, 
uh, they uh, took these banks, uh, these notes out of circulation by using this particular word. And again, the question is, Variantes bills that have the uh, that do not have uh, the cancellation bills that do have it with the perforations with the stamps and we're constantly finding uh, new variations here. This particular bill is not of Bolivian uh, currency. Uh, I put it in because it is the best example that I have of two particular uh, 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 stamps. The first one on the top is uh, it says govern, uh, Gobierno Nacional, national government. It is the uh, law of the 5th of October of 1885. And it says intervention. You can't read the whole word, it says intervention. This means that in 1885, because of a law, the banks were intervened and there was a certain control uh, put on these banks. But the bank, what I the uh, stamp that I want to show you, which I mentioned earlier, it says Province of Cordoba Inspection de Bancos. Only the Province of Cordoba had this on its notes, and this stylized uh, IB in the uh, in the center is the logo for Inspection de Bancos. Uh, but this is the uh, the bank note. Most of the times that they have this, you can't read them very well. Uh, the, the uh, stamps are very light. So that's why I've included this, this particular one because uh, you have a good example of the particular uh, uh, stamp. We're now going to travel to Peru and Chile. Well, um, Richard, actually yeah. I was hoping we could um, open it up for questions because we're almost at the hour. Right, Don't mean to I cut just, you off, but. <laughs> could I just do this very quickly? Okay. Okay. Um, forget the uh, the maps. Uh, this is one of the three C, uh, stamps we have here. Uh, you'll see Banco de Tacna was printed by American Bank. They do not have letters over here. Okay. Um, this particular one, they cut out somebody, probably a Chilean, cut out the word uh, uh, soles uh, to, uh, so that it would not be um, uh, would not be, uh, uh, it was a Chilean that uh, probably did it. This is the Banco Nacional de Chile that also got permission to uh, uh, have uh, their banknotes stamped, which you can read it here, um, convertible all, as the ones we just saw into um, fifths of Bolivianos. And um, this round one here is uh, from the uh, Casa de Moneda in Santiago authorizing that this bill could be circulated. They also have the fraction one fifth over here on the on the back, uh, which you can see the, uh, the Peruvian notes do not have that. Um, these by law had to be circulated. This is a money, a, a coin of a fifth of Boliviano when they were first issued in 1864. This one in 1884, when the law came in, they changed it to 20 cents. But again, they were still using the designation. As I mentioned before, the change in name of Argentina and uh, the street names, et cetera. This particular uh, banknote here has a, uh, a seal on the back. This is the only one publicly known. Um, we skipped the uh, uh, before two others publicly known. I originally thought when I saw this, it reminded me of the British uh, 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 coat of arms. This is a stylized coat of arms, which is not the legitimate one of, uh, of uh, uh, Chile. This is the correct one of Chile, the Wermula, which is type of a, a, of a, um, a deer, has a very, very short tail. Here you have the extended tail, such as you have with England. These seals were put on, as we are told, in England. Then we have a Peruvian coin, which had the Chilean star, the word Chile. Uh, some Peruvian took one of its monies and put, this is a artisanal, uh, put a, a coin, uh, you know, a seal for Peru on there to, as a way of uh, challenging the Chileans. A lot of people think that this is a Peruvian bank. A lot of people think that this is the Chilean star. It is not. This bank had a, uh, a scandal in 1866 and when they came out with the new um, uh, bills, uh, all of them had this star on there. And this is the only 
bank of the 13 bank, private banks in Peru that issued uh, notes that have this particular star, so it was not Chilean. This particular coin, which we'll see on the next one, has a star, doesn't belong to me. Uh, we're trying to figure out what it uh, might mean. So if anyone might have some information on it, uh, we would appreciate uh, 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 having it. It is not a Chilean star that we know because it's a colonial coin. And uh, for that, I thank you. And uh, I'll be happy to hand, answer any questions. Thank you, Richard. Stop screen share. Do we have any questions? Hi, uh, if I may. Yes. Yes. How are you, Emma? Good to see you. And Richard, very good presentation and very interesting uh, materials. I believe that you mentioned in the beginning of uh, the presentation that you were going to cover uh, Uruguay. Is that on today's presentation or is there a separate no, what, one? No, what I said was uh, it is a new chapter I'm adding to this. Okay, I, I'm just beginning that right now. Um, the Uruguayan banknotes that uh, have the Brazilian uh, currency went up to uh, 1851. They're very difficult to get. Uh, uh, I bought one of these notes, but it's still in transit. I haven't received it yet. So that's why I couldn't include it in the, uh, in the presentation. Um, they will be, uh, some of them are like 120 uh, uh, centimos, uh, 240 centimos using the old colonial system, uh, or they will use rice, which is the uh, Portuguese word, uh, uh, which is uh, the equivalent of like peso, they use uh, rice. And that is, uh, uh, there are not many of these, there are only two, maybe three uh, banks, there could be more, but that's what we've been able to identify so far. Um, and, and, and Richard, if I, if I may, please. so I'm, I'm originally from Uruguay and uh, I have a, a, a reasonable collection, uh, you know, before the consolidation happened in uh, 1890, uh, you know, from the Banco Central in, uh, in Uruguay. So if you need any sort of information or any of, you know, uh, you know confirmation or anything, you know, feel free to reach out. I, I would appreciate it. if I can get your name. I think from through Emma, she probably has your name and uh, and all. I'd very much like to uh, get that, and I'll uh, I could send you an email and uh, contact you. I'd very much like yeah, to, absolutely uh, uh, chat with you on this. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Emma. Yes, I thought you may have a question. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> Richard, very interesting presentation uh, because I'm interested in the vignettes and the engraving by American and National and the other companies. And I know some of these notes fairly well and others I don't know, but I'm not aware of the historical background, which is what you've given and the different banks and the denominations and the different currencies, which is particularly interesting. But a couple of little pieces of information that you might find interesting is that, uh, is that the young lady who was on the El Banco Comercio note uh, is not a banker's daughter. It's the president of American Banknotes' daughter, Chloe okay. Gabbett. John okay. Gabbett was the president of American Banknote. And that's a particularly appealing portrait. Uh, also, the, the Tacna notes were printed by the National Bank Note Company, um, not American. National was very much a competitor of American, uh, but it became part of American in 1878-79 right. right. uh, when they lost the federal bank note business. But also that delightful vignette portrait of a horse on the Oxaban, do you pronounce it Oxaban Duru? <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Oxandamburu. <laughs> a little hard for me. Uh, that dog is a Landseer piece of art and his name is Odin. He was used a, a lot actually, uh, but that's the kind of thing that interests me. So at some point you might be interested in knowing more about some of those, but that's my specialty. So, but it was a very interesting talk and learning about the background of the notes and the currencies and the countries. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate your comments and I'd very much like to be in touch with you because um, the reason why I mentioned that this could possibly be, you know, uh, related in Bolivia, uh, there, there are about three or four private banks where we know 
that the children and the ladies are the family of the owners of the yeah, land. Yeah, sometimes they were specials, but it was expensive to do that. It's special engraving cost them a fair amount more to do a special portrait. Uh, but some of them did it, yeah. And well, it's, uh, but it's not common because it's so expensive. Well, Simon Patino uh, was the uh, famous uh, tin baron who uh, in his uh, period was one of the wealthiest men in the world. Yeah, well, he could afford it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Most of them would not uh, because yeah. it just costs too much for special, although the, Sometimes the bank presidents, yeah, you're right, they did it, yeah. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do down here in Peru is to identify uh, the vignettes uh, for the simple reason that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them, uh, uh, when they talk about the railroads and you look at the background uh, uh, seat, uh, part of the, uh, the engraving, I said, this is New England, this is not, you know, and <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, the, in the Indians are our boys, they're not, uh, they're not uh, you know, uh, Indian Indians. And, well, I could uh, probably help you on some of those. The, uh, unfortunately, the National Banknote Company, which did some very nice early work for, um, for Peru, uh, did not have engraving records, whereas we do have engraving records for American banknote and right. who did those and sometimes the artwork origin. But National Banknote, there are no engraving records and the information is definitely harder to come by. But anyway, that's something I could be happy to talk with you more about or share with you. Thank you. I, I just uh, I just jotted your name down and um, <laughs> we'll be in touch with you. <laughs> Good. Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below.